Welcome everybody, this is Wrangler here, hope you're well. This is my latest video where I'm going to be exploring what we're looking at on screen here. And you might be wondering, what is this that I'm looking at? It is in fact Unix running on the Amiga. To be more precise, Unix System 5 release 4.0 that Commodore produced way back in the 90s to run on certain Amiga machines. And in fact, I've got Windows, uh, X Windows, excuse me, running on Unix here, showing off what it can do. But the question is, how do you set this up on an Amiga and get it running? I'm going to show you in this video. Just by way of a spoiler alert, this is the niche of the niche here. Uh, it is an exercise in patience to get it going. And even once you have, let's just be honest that actually there isn't a huge amount you can do in a version of Unix that's really this old. Nevertheless, it is a bit of uh, retro computer history. Uh, and so that is why I decided to have a go myself and see if I could get it working. Let's take a look at how I did it. Now, the first step in the process might surprise you a little bit, and that's that I am not actually going to try and install Unix directly on this machine because, frankly, I just think that is too much hard work. And as it happens, I don't even have a tape drive to install the Unix tapes from. So what I'm going to do is take the hard disk out of here and plug it into my regular desktop PC using one of these. This is a PCI to SCSI card. To be more precise, it's an Adaptec AHA 2940UW, which will give me an internal 50 pin SCSI slot that I can just connect this SCSI card directly into. Now, you might wonder why, why have I selected this particular card? It's PCI, not PCIe. Uh, one small advantage of this is actually this card is compatible with mediator uh, that support or have uh, PCI slots so I can actually use this in my mediator if I wanted to to add SCSI support through the mediator that was the reason I selected it but just for this task really useful because I can plug my old SCSI drive into my modern PC and set this all up under emulation the other thing to note here is I've got a retargetable graphics card in this machine. That, in fact, is a Piccolo graphics card. Um, why am I pointing that out? Well, Amix, in other words, Unix for the Amiga, does support certain RTG graphics cards, the uh, Piccolo being one of the ones that is supported. So I'm just keen to get that going um, and use something a little bit more capable than the Amiga's own graphics display. So here I am back at my Windows PC looking at WinUAE that I'm going to use to emulate my Amiga 3000. More on that in a minute. Just to say that I have now plugged in my uh, physical hard drive into the uh, SCSI card which in turn is in the PCI slot in my uh, main computer here so I can directly write to that hard disk. Uh, but how do we configure WinUAE? to pretend to be ready to install Unix, well, uh, there is a process to follow and you have to be really pretty careful about how you go about this because it is very easy for it to fail. I am following some instructions that are on www.amigaunix.com. Uh, great thanks to whoever set up that site. It's been a great source of information about how to get uh, Unix working on the Amiga. So let's just step through that. As you can see, I'm using WinUAE 4.1.0. Uh, a reasonably new version of WinUAE will do this just fine. Uh, quick starts, uh, A3000 as a quick start could be really pretty helpful here, but I'm going to step through each of the settings so that you can see exactly what I've got set up. Very importantly, in the CPU and FPU page, I've got the 68030 here. Do not try the 040 or the 060. I think Unix breaks with those processors, so the 030 is the one to select. You do need the MMU. You do need the 6882 FPU 
turned on. Just before we leave the left hand side of this page, it is very tempted to think that you should turn on more compatible here. Don't do that. Uh, contrary to what you might think, actually that breaks the install script, so make sure more compatible is turned off. On the right hand side, fast as possible is the right selection here. Don't need to change any of these other things. Chipset, this should all be set via the quick start, but just for completeness, fully CS, chipset extra A3000, wait for blitter is turned on, and collision level is sprites and sprites versus playfield, so that's all fine. Advanced chipset, compatible settings turned on, no problem. ROM, kickstart 2.04 from your real A3000, uh, set here. Uh, RAM, got two megabytes of chip RAM set up, and then over here, the Z3 fast memory, set that at 16 megabytes. Why 16 megabytes? Well, Unix is only set up to use a maximum of 16 megabytes of fast RAM. There's no point in trying to set this slider any higher than that. And you are going to need RAM to get things running. So that is the best answer is 16 megs there. Floppy drives, right. So this is where I come to my little folder that I prepared down here with the three files that I need to get the install going. So two floppy images, a boot floppy and a root floppy, and then a tape file that's zipped up. It's uh, quite a large file, 104 megabytes, that's why that's zipped up. You can get these three files and the other ones that we're going to need ultimately to do our install from the website that I just mentioned. But for these purposes, just to get the thing going, uh, in the floppy drives I need to install the boot ADF, which I have done there. OK, next thing is setting up the drives, and this you have to do really pretty carefully. So first thing we're going to do is set up the tape drive. So let's click on that, and I am going to um, set it to load my tape file down here, so uh, EAMIX tape zip, there we go, and my HD controller is going to be the Commodore A3000 SCSI, I want this running off the onboard SCSI device, and crucially I set that as SCSI unit ID number 4. The Unix installer has hard-coded in it that the tape drive will be on Unit 4, so there's no choice about this. If you want it to work, that's what it has to be. So I can add my tape drive. Next, my hard disk. Uh, and to add that, I need to click this button here. Now, the little uh, shield next to add hard drive is to remind me that in order for this to work properly, I need to run WinUAE in administrator mode. Very important. If you don't do this, you can't access your hard drive properly. I have done that. So when I click add hard drive here, it locks up. And I think what's happened is my drive went to sleep. OK, here we are and I can select my hard disk, my physical hard disk, which is this 4.1 gig hard disk here. Probably best not to try anything bigger than 4 gigs. Um, if you just see access denied over here in brackets against your drive, that means you did not start it in administrator mode, when UAE that is, so start again in administrator mode and then you can access your drive. So that's mine there. I need to select it as uh, in the drop down as Commodore A3000 SCSI, it's the onboard or emulating the onboard SCSI device. Uh, critically, I need to set this as unit number 6. Again, for the same reason, um, that absolutely has to be number 6 because that is how the uh, installer is hard coded. So I can go ahead and add that drive. So those are my two drives. If uh, you want to and you don't want a hard a physical hard drive you want a hard file then you could do that as well 
click on the expansions button just check you've got a3000 SCSI by Commodore turned on it that should be automatic but just in case RTG boards I don't actually need any of that because uh, I'm gonna start from the point of view to begin with of just a basic hardware setup I'll come back to adding in the RTG card later on so with that I think we can go ahead and click start and allow the emulation to get going uh, you can probably see the floppy drive track counter is stepping up there so uh, something's happening insert floppy disk 2 so uh, that's looking good so far so I hit F12 to get back into the dialogues here let me just go ahead and type in the path name for the root uh, floppy disk image hit OK and then hit return booting and what we should see is yeah great so Unix has started up and it's beginning to load things off the floppy drives that's exactly what we want to see just let that churn its way through a little bit further um, and what you will find with these Amix installs is that actually nothing seems to happen very quickly uh, it is a long and slow process to do this full installation in fact we might need a few cuts as we go through here uh, just to try and keep the uh, extent of this video to something a little bit more manageable. Ah, right, so progress. Uh, Amiga Unix install script has started. And now I've got to do key mappings of my keyboard. Well, I, I've got a British keyboard, so I am number eight. So let me go ahead and hit that. Uh, and then it's going to ask me some more questions. Do I want to install or repair? Uh, by the way, the uh, alternatives given in square brackets here are the ones that are going to happen if I just hit return. So I'm just going to do that and it will um, automatically carry that out. And now insert the Unix installation tape. Well, we've already got that. Hit return. So scanning the SCSI bus, the hard disks, and hard disk attached to the system. There we go. So there is uh, some free space on my um, drive. How many megabytes do you want to set aside for Amiga OS? So actually, if I want to dual boot this, then uh, I might want to leave some space behind. So uh, maybe a sensible amount might be 200 megabytes, just to have enough for a boot partition. So it's not going to use every space, uh, or all the space, um, and to be honest I'm just going to go ahead and allow the rest of it, this uh, drive to be just the root file system. Uh, I could create some more partitions later if I want them. And a 30 megabyte swap partition that seems sensible as well. So there we are it's uh, set up my uh, three partitions that I might want to use got those going um, now then it's you will have seen here that it's asking me uh, what kind of file system do I want uh, it's gonna default to S5 in all honesty I really don't want that what I want is the UFS file system so uh, let me go ahead and do that UFS and off it goes to check partitions I'm reading the floppy drive at the same time alright uh, now here's a choice I can either do the standard Unix installation which is option one or everything on the tape um, it takes a long time to install everything on the tape but uh, I am going to do that just so that everything is there in my installation so option not 23 but number two let's just go with that so off it goes to set up the geometry for my file systems you know I guess formatting partitions and all that kind of good stuff uh, you can see here that the HD lights going red hopefully you can see that so it's writing to my hard disk 
and uh, we will just leave it some time I think here to just go and do its own thing uh, time to go and make uh, a cup of tea or something like that I reckon so it's saying it's retensioning the tape now reading the tape excellent so this is what we want to be going on uh, this is really a proof point that the tape has been set up correctly in the uh, configuration settings installing Amiga Unix essential components brilliant sit back and just let this do its task Installing Barclay compatibility package, all sounds good stuff. There's going to be a whole long sequence of these uh, elements that it's installing, and this is going to take quite some time to do. Okay, I think we're approaching the end of this massive installation. Maybe just a few more seconds for it to finish off installing the uh, all the different packages. And there we are, done reading tape. Fantastic news. Rewinding tape, yeah, well, that doesn't take any time at all on an emulator, but patching the kernel does, so that's what's going to happen now. And I think shortly we will be coming to the end of the installation process. There we go. System is halted, you may reboot or turn off power. Right, so before I do that, uh, what I need to do is eject my floppy drive. I don't need that anymore otherwise it's going to try and boot off that but otherwise hit uh, the keyboard reset and uh, wish me luck here we go so we're going to reboot and this time off the hard drive excellent and Unix has come up almost instantly uh, it st says uh, date bad conversion don't worry about that too much that is all to do with the year 2000 bug yes the year 2000 bug is still around this software was written 30 years ago in the early 90s when uh, it had never been envisaged you might get to uh, four digit dates would you believe it even though it was only what eight years away at that point anyway um, let's get on with this installation it's asking me for a node name for this machine, so I'm going to call it Amex Box because that just is very distinctive. So let's do that. Um, the machine's network domain, well, I think we could just uh, stick with that. We don't really care. Um, do I want to create a small networks host file with two addresses? No, not really. I don't have a network card installed in this machine, so I don't really care. Uh, if you do, then uh, you can go ahead and do that. Alright, now I need to set my time zone. It is suggesting time zone 47, which is US Eastern Time, and I really don't want that. What I want is number 28, which is GB and ERA. That's my time zone. Uh, and set the date. Now, notice here it is expecting a two digit year. It's back to that uh, point about the year 2000 bug, so we cannot go beyond the year 1999. Uh, for all those uh, out there uh, thinking about partying like 1999 let's pretend that it really is partying like 1999 New Year's Eve uh, just note the date format there for uh, Europeans that's MMDDYY not our more usual DDMMYY uh, so that is New Year's Eve 1999 remember it well off we go. What's the current time? Well, that will do. Doesn't really matter. Not interested. Would I like to s assign a password? I most definitely would do. Uh, so let's get going 
here. So first of all, this is going to be the root password. So let's enter something there that I'm going to remember. And would I like to assign a password to the guest account? Yes, I would. Uh, so let's send set something for that. And we enter it. OK, would I like to create a user account? Um, not at this stage, so I'm going to know that one. Right, now a couple of important questions. Are you using a, an A2024 or monitor and high resolution monitor? No, I'm not, so I can just hit return on this one. And do I want to configure X windows at this stage? No, I don't. Answer this one, no. We can come back to that later on. And do I want net news? No, uh, I use the Tinternet for that these days, so no. All right, so there are my settings. Um, that is good enough for me. I don't want to change any of those, so I'm going to hit N. Uh, the key map is loaded, and the system is coming up. So this is standard Unix stuff for getting ready. And there we are. We have a color change, which shows that everything is OK. So I am just going to log on as root here and hope that I can remember my password from before, which I can. Um, so that's me into Amix, uh, Amiga Unix, and everything is all right with the world. So ls just gives me a listing, not der, ls to uh, get me a listing of um, where I am in the uh, operating in the file structure and I can CD to other directories like that by the way so here we are we have a working um, setup so that's great news um, what you need to do to uh, end your session is the command shutdown very important that you don't forget that, otherwise you go through a painful process of revalidating the hard disk. Uh, speaking from experience here, you do not want that. Uh, so shut down, and I am in the wrong directory, so thank you. Yes, I must go back to my root directory and shut down from there. And then the shutdown process is almost as long as the installation process, so we sit back and enjoy the ride while uh, Amix shuts down. Um, but that's essentially it. We now have a working Amix Amiga Unix install. So actually shutdown has worked absolutely fine here uh, and we can power off. The, just before I do that, the fact is we have a working Amiga Unix system here. What we need to do next is patch this uh, with the final, latest final patch files uh, and get that going. So the step now is to patch our Unix system up with the latest version of the patches. So I'm back at the start of Win UAE. Uh, I've taken out all floppy um, disks just to make sure it's a clean boot. So let me start that up. Click start and we get straight into Amix. There we go. And everything is booting as normal as it was before so let me go in straight away with my uh, root username and password and uh, what I need to do now is go back to my floppy drives and here uh, um, insert my uh, floppy patch device uh, floppy image here that I have added into my Amex directory of helpful files. Again, this is from the website I was mentioning before. This is the one we now need to use to patch our system. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, there's my patch floppy. Get that. And then back up my command prompt here. I need to uh, sort of execute that with the following unix command uh, so sh sh uh, as my um, script tool utility and then slash dev slash dsk slash fd0 um, that uh, disk contains apparently patch disk one and two for the international usa only well you know 
I think we'll survive with that. Uh, let's let it just carry on and do all its stuff. Uh, again, this may take a little time to work its way through. Okay, so uh, it's come back with some instructions on the screen. Uh, there they are for posterity. Don't think we need to worry about any of that. Do I want a detailed view of the changes? No, I don't. Thank you very much. Uh, so just keep going. Uh, so then the instructions that come next. The patch disk must be applied in the single user run level. Uh, so log off all users, log in as root, which is what I am at the moment, and type shutdown minus I capital S. So let us do that. And then we've got to remember that once it has rebooted, uh, we need to do the uh, slash var slash patch slash apply. So shut down first. And we go through the sh standard shutdown process, which always seems to take longer than it ought to. Just bear in mind it hasn't shut down just yet, it's still uh, sorting itself out. Okay, uh, so we are going to go and give the root password for system maintenance here. So let me type that in. So now I need to go ahead and type in the command to apply those patches. There we go. Combine patch disk. What does it do? I think we've seen those instructions before. I don't want. Whoops. Don't want a list of uh, detailed changes. So just no. Uh, okay. The procedure will install the new patches and create a new kernel and install it on your hard drive boot partition. Great. That's what we want. Do you want this procedure to install the updated kernel immediately after the patches are installed? Yes, I do. Please. Do you want a floppy made that can boot the machine using the original kernel as an alternative? Nah, don't need anything like that. We know what we're doing. Type go or quit. Well, I think let's go. So, lots of backing up going on. And patching. making progress. Once again we sit back and uh, relax and just enjoy the ride for a bit. Okay, so it's finished doing all the patches and I can just uh, eject all floppy disks is what it's saying on the screen here. So that seems like good advice. So let's uh, do that. Uh, eject that. Uh, and then reboot to put the changes into effect. This should be done as soon as possible using these commands. Right, so cd to the root directory and shut down minus i6. When your machine comes up, you'll be asked the initial system configuration questions. Okay, so I'm sure we're ready for that. So it's now going to shut down and reboot again. So more patience required. it is rebooting so uh, hopefully we'll see an amix yeah message here we go so amix box is the node name and the network domain yeah that's good enough do i want to create a network host file no um what time zone am i in 28 it's remember that correctly so i can just return through this and the date it's still new year's eve 1999 uh, the time, that's good enough, don't really care about that. Would I like to assign a password? Yeah, so let's just go through all of this again. Uh, and 
undo my passwords and then a password for the guest account reset those and I don't want a user account I'm not using a monitor and I'm not configuring X windows and I don't want uh, X windows login screen at this stage either nor do I want net news do I want to change any of those no I don't that's all good stuff so let's get going key map loaded system starting up and we're back into our prompt again let me log in as root and there we are you can see that now we're running Amiga version 2.1 patch level 2a uh, that wasn't there before that just shows that we are on the uh, latest versions of Amiga Unix System 5 release 4.0 so there we are we've done it we've achieved an installation so that's all very good and well that's fantastic in fact to get that going I can now run uh, Unix but what I really like to do is to get that retargetable graphics card to work so that's my next task but before I forget let's not uh, forget to uh, shut down properly so that uh, everything is in its proper state when we get that extra bit of installation done. Setting up the fully patched version of Amix is in fact the easy bit in this process. What we're now going to do is set up X windows on a graphics card that's our next task and this is a multiple stage process so we're going to take this nice and easy as we go through it before we do so though what graphics cards are supported well there was the original Commodore A2410 Lowell graphics card that came with some of the Unix capable Amigas uh, that I think you can install directly out of the box if you select yes to installing X windows during the setup process so if you're lucky enough to have one of those then the uh, process of getting X windows up and running is that much more straightforward for you uh, but what other graphics cards are supported well someone has written drivers for a few others they include the Domino graphics card and Omnibus graphics cards. To be honest, I've never even seen either of those before, but perhaps a slightly more uh, accessible are the Merlin, Picasso 2, Piccolo and Spectrum graphics cards. Certainly they do seem to be around from time to time. Uh, interesting there uh, is the reference to the Spectrum graphics card uh, there were of course a couple of Spectrum graphics cards uh, I am assuming that that is a reference to the Spectrum 2824 which uses the same graphics chip as the Piccolo and Picasso cards uh, but it could mean also the Spectrum 11024 um, not entirely sure about that if you know then leave a comment on this video in fact if you have got it the uh, this process to work with any of those graphics cards do say also as I said before I'm trying to set this up for the Piccolo graphics card uh, Picasso 2 is known to work it would be good to uh, get some positive confirmations on the other cards and one other thing to note is that uh, Amix only works in Zorro 2 mode it doesn't seem to understand Zorro 3 boards at all so for any of those cards graphics cards that support Zorro 3 then you need to jumper them so that they are working in Zorro 2 mode yep sorry folks that means you are going to lose some speed out of this process but that's the way it is if you want to get uh, Amix working right enough of that now we need to get on with the process itself and uh, as we look at the screen here you can see I've downloaded a couple of extra files 
these two at the bottom here from the website I mentioned before. In fact, this first one, install.spga, actually comes as a GNU zip file, gzip file, uh, with the .gz extension. I've just uh, unzipped that and put it into my directory here because it's the unzipped version that we want. Uh, and then we've got this tape file at the bottom which has got the relevant version of X Windows on it. Uh, but what we're going to concentrate on is this install.svga file because the first thing we're going to do is get that onto our Amex machine which is a little bit easier said than done. Um, in essence what we've got to do is format a floppy uh, PC standard floppy MS-DOS 728k floppy put this file on it which then Amix can read. So that's what we're going to do which is why in uh, WinUAE here I've got my regular Amiga setup uh, and the install.svga file waiting to go within that um, space so to speak. So let's go into here. I'm going to just create a blank disk called Amix create custom disk and let's just call it Amix floppy like that and then I can call it up in here uh, especially if I type it in right Amix floppy and that will come up there but at the moment that is set up as a um, Amiga format floppy which is not what I want so let me open up the storage drivers for PC0 which is already mounted uh, and then I should be able to format this drive to be MS-DOS device and very slowly that is going to go away and format that drive to MS-DOS standard. Okay, so now it has uh, formatted that ADF file now to be uh, as an MS-DOS file. There we go, covering up the icon, here it is. And what I want to do is copy this file into there. Um, which just down here you can see it's copying that file across and oh, there we go at last Amiga OS is catching up so that's in here is it going to show me yeah there we go install.svg let's drop the A just because we're in that um, crappy MS-DOS format where you can't have long file names but that is it. I've created my uh, Amex disk with install.svg on it. So that's step number one. Right, step number two is to uh, let's eject that disk and I can in fact uh, come out of my emulation now because what I want to do is go back to my uh, Amiga 3000 setup with Amix on it. So let's do that next. Okay, so here is my setup back for the A3000. Really good idea is to save this as a configuration in WinUAE so then you've got all the settings set up correctly for next time. At the moment I'm going to leave this floppy drives area blank because uh, I don't want to try and boot off that disk that we just created. Uh, but we'll be filling that in in a moment. Uh, let's not forget to set up the RTG graphics card, which for me is a Piccolo the, um, graphics card with Zorro 2 implementation here. Uh, you might want to select something else. Notice that Spectrum graphics card is here, or one of them is here, um, but for me it's the Piccolo, so that's fine. But let me just show you a quick labour saving device here that's going to really help later on. So back to our hard drives uh, page here and what you need to do first is make sure that your uh, boot disk is shown here. 
um, just for these purposes mine's not here but you need to either add, if it's not already there add your hard drive in the way that we were looking at before or add your hard file if you're just staying under emulation uh, either way get your device up here and remember as SCSI um, unit number six but then what we need to do is add the archive file that we were looking at before uh, as a hard file so uh, make sure that we've got the right device here which is the Commodore A3000 SCSI let's add it as unit 5 so that's not a unit number that we're using for anything else it's not bootable and it's not writable and then up here I'm going to point to where all my files are and here it is the x11r5bin.tar file uh, that's that sorted out um, okay that as I say make sure your hard file and hard drive uh, and or hard drive uh, whichever one is your boot partition is set up okay um, and then you're pretty much ready to go quick check that there's nothing in the floppy drive and then you're ready to hit start So off we go, start the emulation and uh, immediately it starts powering up and we're into the Unix uh, heading text so that's all good stuff. Just wait until we get to the, the uh, logon prompt. The system is ready, here we go, right, so log in as root again and uh, just a final check that we are running the right version of Amix so we've both got 2.1 patch level 2a here and we're also seeing its Unix system 5 release 4.0 patch level 2.1c so that's all correct we need that before we go any further all right now before we kick off one thing we've got to do is uh, get open look and X windows both uh, to install all their config files so the way we're going to do that is run ol init uh, which just kind of sets it all up the first time before we start modifying anything for our RTG card so this is just running open look in the Amiga's native graphics uh, ECS in other words so that's it it's got to the full menus there so I can just ex exit straight out of that and come back to the command prompt and then do the same thing for X windows with X in it and it goes through a similar kind of process which takes a bit longer uh, again in ECS graphics so we'll just give that a few seconds while it's doing its stuff there it is uh, so I can go back to here and exit let's try that again exit out of there and uh, then I also need to do this for the other account that I set up earlier so I've got root but I also have guest if you've got alternate accounts you need to do that for them as well the best thing to do here is leave the root account logged on as I, I am already there but then press alt F2 which kind of takes me to a new screen for a new user so I can log in here as guest and I need to do the same process and that's going to go through all the same kind of configuration and setup stuff that we were looking at before. Just while this is loading, a quick reminder that it's just really important for reasons that I don't fully understand in Win UAE to set up your boot hard drive first in the hard drives configuration screen and then the uh, hard file to the uh, archive that we're going to use the X Windows archive second why does it matter to do it in that order I don't know all I can say is it does um, just from testing out stuff uh, I discovered that it made quite a big difference and basically crashed the system if I did it in the opposite order anyway enough of a warning um, so we have initialized open look and X in it on both accounts so we can move on now to work on that floppy file that we had before so hit F12 to get to 
the floppy drives and this is where I need to remember where I saved it so uh, here it is Amix floppy ADF so that was the one from before and I need to copy the file from the floppy drive to my home directory uh, just a quick word of caution here uh, Unix is case sensitive so you've got to get the spellings exactly right MS-DOS insists on capitalizing file names so what was install.svga is now in capitals install.svg because we can only have three character extensions but then when I'm saving it to my home drive I'm giving it back its old name again here in lowercase so that's what that's doing you can see here the track counter is counting up so the floppy is whirring away in virtual space and it has done that so now I can go and have a look at that file and there it is install.svga so I can actually run that with the sh command and that is going to set up three script files basically uh, that can be used to install the X11 server. There we go. So that message is all about uh, how to get on and do that. Uh, so what we need to do next is go to this directory var tump, and there are those three install files. So next thing we've got to do is amend these files, which is a bit irritating to have to do this but we do and because it means we're using a text editor called vi vi which is let's just say an acquired taste in other words pretty fiddly to use there are two basic modes for it one is the sort of command mode which you start in here I can move around the screen uh, uh, using the arrow keys and I get an annoying beep if I go off the edge of the uh, lines um, in command mode you can hit X to delete characters and U to undo any changes you make the other thing you can hit is I to insert characters so that's what I need to do first here so you can see the line I'm on MT so rewind the tape we don't need that anymore because we're not using a tape so hit I to insert hash to comment that out hash for me is on my single apostrophe key could be different for you uh, and then escape to come out of insert mode so that's that one done need to do the same thing on the next line I to insert hash escape and then we need to modify this last line uh, first thing we can do is get rid of all this junk on the end which is just sending output to null so I could just hit X to delete single characters at a time and then I need to delete these bits after the slash dev slash so let's go on and do that now insert I and this is where we are now going to point to our hard file so we need slash dev slash DSK for disk slash and now our specific disk which is unit 5 so C5 if you selected something else different unit number for the hard file you need to put it there uh, disk 0 we've only got one disk attached on that unit and then uh, strictly speaking partition 0 which just means the whole disk so C5D0 S0 points to our hard file come out of insert mode with escape uh, and now I can save this file and the way to do that is colon W which writes it out again and then I can colon Q to quit if you make a mistake the thing to do uh, that might be easiest rather than trying to correct mistakes is colon Q exclamation mark which will just quit without saving but here I have saved the file so I can just do colon Q to come out so there's my file and now we can run that file with the sh command sh install r5 and go away and make a cup of tea because it's going to take quite some time while it copies files from our hard file archive onto our uh, disk Unix uh, OS disk so let's just give this a moment and then we'll be back when it's completed 
So after a couple of minutes, uh, the installation process is completed and there we are, we get a message at the bottom about editing our config files, etc, etc. OK, we'll come back to that in a minute. First of all, what we've got to do is uh, back up our profile and then amend it. So first, to get there, the right location, cd to slash, etc. And then copy our profile to a backup like that and now we can edit the profile so it's back to our favorite editor Vi and it's uh, this line that needs to be edited and this is just basically giving a bunch of locations where uh, the command ca uh, prompts can find specific commands and I need to just skirt through some of this and then uh, make some insertions so let's just get beyond user amiga bin colon and then let's make some insertions here so i mode uh, to do insertions slash user slash bin slash capital x 11 colon and then the second one slash user slash capital x 11 capital r5 slash bin colon right that's it come out of insert mode and then colon w to write and colon q to quit it's the last little look before we quit have we got all the spelling right there i think we have so good to go um right let's get rid of all that gubbins from the screen and go to the directory not that user sys and we need to make uh, so that's going to compile the new kernel with the changes that we've made so we'll just give that a few seconds okay there it is and it's created a new file called relloc unix uh, and what we need to do is to copy that file into a specific location called slash stand that has done that uh, now let's go to that location just check it's there yes it is there uh, and now we need to um, sort of integrate that kernel into our standard um, setup so we use the command make boot part capitals kernel equals relloc unix there we go uh, just check that that all looks okay off we go and let that do its stuff which it has done and now we need to reboot so go to the root directory shut down minus i6 which is going to restart So as usual this takes quite a while to work its way through so we'll come back in a minute when it's rebooted. So we're in the middle of rebooting here and back at the uh, log on prompt so let's go ahead and log in again. There we are. Now uh, next task that we've got in front of us is to make some uh, amendments to a file called xsvga config which is right there in front of us so fire up our favorite text editor uh, and get that capitalization right there we go and what this is doing is just defining the different screen modes that we can use they're here down at the bottom now it might be for your particular graphics card you may need to amend some of these timings here uh, that define uh, exactly what the screen mode means. Uh, the other thing that uh, you might want to do is change the screen mode that uh, X Windows is actually going to use. So up here it's set by default to 1152 by 900 at 60 hertz. That's a bit of a weird screen mode for me. So I'm going to change that uh, to something a bit more sensible uh, and 
you know I've got a Piccolo graphics card there uh, I don't want to push it too far so let's put it to 1024 by 768 at 60 Hertz so that's going to correspond with this particular screen mode down here so I think that's a pretty sensible place to start um, I wouldn't go much further than that at least to get going uh, but equally I wouldn't go below 800 by 600 either because uh, that open look will need 800 by 600 just to get going so again write that file out and quit so that was the change for my root user what I need to do is to copy that file to my guest account so that they've got something to use as well um, so let's copy x svga config to home guest uh, just check that there so that's done get rid of all of that and we're on the home straight just a little bit more finishing off to do now you might think at this point that we're all home and dry but that's not actually true uh, if you try and start up open look right now what you'll find is you'll get an error from a missing font uh, now so what we've got to do is amend some files using our favorite text editor in order to correct that so let's just make sure I'm in my root directory and then I need to edit the dot x init rc file which looks like this uh, to point to the correct font files so first thing to do is this line here twm ampersand I need to comment that out in the usual way so into insert mode insert the hash come out of insert mode uh, and actually I need to insert some blank lines here so I might as well do that uh, what, and then I need to type in some new commands so this is going to redirect the uh, fonts to the right place so x set fp plus and then uh, into a slightly different location than is shown on the website that I've been referencing amigaunix.com uh, my fonts are actually in a different location so user slash x lib fonts capital X O L was my location for the fonts and then O W O L W S M to start up open look those are the changes that I needed to make to to this uh, file to get it to work and then colon excuse me I've done it again haven't I am still in insert mode so let's just delete that colon colon W to write that out and colon Q to quit so that's the uh, sort of settings file for my root account now I need to do something similar for my guest account so I have to go to home guest and then amend that dot XRC init RC file and there that is and it's the same process again so comment out that line and insert a line and X set and it's the same instructions that I had before uh, just a mirror of those X set user X lib fonts result and OL WSM escape W quit so that should now have set the location of that fonts directory correctly in the configuration let me just go back to the root directory and hit X in it to start X windows and immediately you can see that uh, WinUAE has resized the screen so that's a really good sign because that's uh, showing that our 1040 by 768 uh, configuration setting has been accepted 
uh, and implying we're no longer in uh, ECS graphics and that looks like that is a window trying to emerge and there we are we're in X it's not looking that wonderful at the moment so let's just uh, give this a um, a trial with some different workspace colors so uh, what do we fancy sunny day that sounds like could be something good or spring meadow Ooh, not sure I like that one uh, industrial blight pretty bleak isn't it um, factory well let's just try that uh, and give that a go instantly you can see here that you do need a 1040 by 768 screen to actually get to the buttons at the bottom uh, it looks like A is a shortcut, keyboard shortcut here to apply if you happen to be in a smaller screen size but let's just give that a go and suddenly we're into something that looks a little bit more colourful a little bit more like a graphical user interface um, I'm going to stop there because I want to try this out on an Amiga but there are plenty of programs that you can try out that are in the uh, X Windows bin folder uh, that can do all sorts of fancy stuff under X Windows but I think we're almost there I want to try this out on real hardware so let me just exit out of that and back into the command prompt and I need to sort of double exit here so exit out of that uh, window manager warning same foreground and input window header colors given okay well I think we can live with that uh, and finally shut down so just as that shutting down there uh, I think everything is set up as it should be I want to just try this back on the real machine uh, and then have a further play around I can power off excellent well it's the moment of truth everything's put back together and I think we're ready to rock and roll the only thing left to do is hit the on switch and hope everything works now it's a pretty old hard drive that I've got in the system so it takes quite a long time to just spin up you can see the activity light there just flashing away while it goes through its routine and then it goes solid for a while because of reasons and eventually we'll be ready to boot and here we go So apologies for the poor image quality here. Unix seems to uh, always open an interlaced display to get the high res output, I imagine. I'm afraid because of the way I'm sampling that, it just doesn't look great on this capture. It looks better in real life, although a bit flickery, obviously. The other thing to say is Unix is not fast at the best of times and this is a 16 megahertz motherboard so not the fastest A3000 in the West either so this is going to take just a little bit of time to get going but let's be patient. The system is ready allegedly. Well I can tell you the hard disk light is still flickering away madly so it's still doing stuff. Okay, the colour change and a login prompt. This is looking promising, so let's just type in username and password. And we are logged in and at a prompt, so let's just go straight into X Windows. And this is where we will kick over, cut over from the Amiga's native video with all that flickering 
into the graphics card. And for some reason, uh, X window seems to start off in this crosshatch display that the graphics card is really not liking very much. So just bear with it until X gets going. All right, here we are. X is starting up. Looks like the graphics are displaying OK. And we have a pointer. There we are, into X. Success. So that's it, that's completed our installation. Just to say there are some sample programs in the slash user slash x11r5 slash bin folder. In fact, the ones we're looking at on screen here are called xearth to give us that lovely background globe that we can see and then maze uh, that you can see solving its own mazes live in front of us. Uh, one word of caution here is that the X Windows implementation seems to leave us with a German key map for our keyboards. Um, not the uh, basic Unix installation, that's still with your whatever you set originally, but only in X Windows is it on the German key map. If you know how to change that, please leave a comment because it would be good to change that. But uh, to do forward slashes, you need to hit Shift 7. Otherwise, that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed watching all about Unix on the Amiga. Join me next time.